In this video, I'm going to show you how to publish the all new Adobe Captivate projects for your learning management system. My friend James reached out to me through the comments of my YouTube channel and asked a very simple question, which I thought, you know, would be self explanatory, but I guess it isn't actually that obvious. So we're going to talk a little bit about publishing for the all new Adobe Captivate specifically for your learning management system. Okay. The first thing that we need to do is set up our preferences. So I'm going to click on the edit drop down menu and go down to preferences. There's a lot of settings and so forth that you can change, you know, give your course a proper title and all that stuff. But when it comes to publishing for your learning management system, the most important section to look at in preferences is the category under quizzing called reporting. Now here you would need to enable reporting first of all. And uh, the next step would be to select the standard for the reporting. I'm not sure what the most popular e-learning standard is these days. It used to be SCORM 1.2, but let's say for a moment you need to publish this for SCORM 2004. Now, once you've selected that, an important step a lot of people miss is to go in and configure the SCORM standard here with a bunch of information. You might need to provide, you know, a course code. You should probably replace the course title with something more meaningful other than Captivate eLearning course. So I could call this customer service and we could put in a description here. Uh, if this is the second version of this course, you might want to update version one to two and any other identifiers that you might need. I'm going to go ahead and uh, return to the enable reporting section. And there's two categories, at least with SCORM 2004, that you need to be considering. And that's, of course, what, can, what makes your course considered complete, right? Is it just a matter of viewing all the slides? Maybe that's what makes it complete. And you can make those choices under this section here. And then, of course, what makes it successful? In this case here, it could be a quiz. So if the quiz is passed, fantastic. Uh, that's good. You can also include interaction data. I don't know why you wouldn't uh, if your LMS has the ability to publish interaction data and run reports on it. Uh, obviously that information is useful. There are some smaller settings here that, you know, you can select based on your experience using your LMS. For example, if you have frequent disconnects with your LMS, maybe send data on every slide so that some of that information is not lost. If you don't want to include bookmarking, um, so in other words, when learners return to a course, they would always return back to the beginning. You could select never send resume data, for example. Once you're done with that, click on OK and you're good to start publishing. Publishing is done from this little three dot icon next to the preview. We can select that and we can choose publish. And because we've enabled SCORM in our preferences, there's nothing to select here other than uh, in this case here, you know, giving the course a title such as customer underscore service or something like that. That's what the zip file and folder will be called. If I go ahead and publish, What's going to happen is I'm going to end up with a zip file on my desktop. And that's, of course, what I need to supply my LMS administrator so they can upload the course uh, to the LMS. It also is going to publish a folder allowing you to preview the course if you'd like to double check it one last time. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.